This week, we are talking about building muscle on low-carb diets. Low-carb diet kind of revolution came around a few years ago, possibly low-carb being superior for various forms of exercise since you were fat adapted, you could burn more fat, those sorts of things. And there was also pushback of people saying, whoa, 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 you need carbs for exercise performance. Carbs can be turned into glucose. Glucose can be stored as glycogen. Glycogen is important for exercise performance. So what does the research actually say about this kind of stuff? And what does it say about building muscle on low carb diets as well as strength gains? If we look at the evidence, what it seems to show is that if you're doing ultra endurance exercise, ketogenic or low carb diet appears to be just fine for that. That is because you are mostly burning fat during those sorts of exercise periods because it's low intensity, it doesn't have a high oxygen cost. And so for ultra endurance stuff, it appears to be fine. Now for regular aerobic exercise, it gets a little bit more dicey. If you're below 60% of your VO2 max, it appears to be okay. But once you start approaching 70% or greater of your VO2 max, we do start to see negative effects of low carb diets. Well, my uncle's second cousin's best friend's dog sitter is a endurance runner and they do low carb and they run this race and they hit a PR on their time and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I, I can also find a guy who smoked every day of his adult life until he was 95 years old and then died because he got hit by a train. It doesn't prove anything. This is why we have these things called randomized control trials. When it gets over 70% of a VO2 max, what happens? You switch to a little bit more anaerobic systems for energy metabolism. Now, why is that important? Anaerobic means without oxygen. So it gets to the point where the oxygen cost is so great that you cannot deliver enough oxygen to the muscle in order for the mitochondria to be able to turn those fatty acids and acetyl-CoA into ATP and energy. And when that happens, you need glycolysis. Now glycolysis is the metabolism of glucose, which does not require oxygen. And actually per unit of oxygen, fat produces way more ATP than glycolysis or glucose. But again, when you get to high levels of exercise, you're not worried about caloric density, those sorts of things, or energy density. And glycogen also becomes extremely important during high intensity exercise. So the research is pretty clear in high intensity exercise, over 70% of VO2 max, low carb or ketogenic diets do appear to negatively affect endurance, like time to exhaustion, uh, as well as performance. Now, what does the research say about gaining muscle mass or strength when on a ketogenic diet? So far, there's only really two good studies looking at this. And they're both done by the same lead researcher, Vargas. In one study, they equated calories and protein and looked at either a calorie protein matched ketogenic diet or a calorie protein matched non-ketogenic diet. What they saw was the ketogenic diet group actually gained a little bit less fat than the non-ketogenic group, but they gained significantly less lean body mass as well. Carbohydrates, while they do not increase muscle protein synthesis, they do decrease muscle protein breakdown. Insulin has a pretty powerful effect on inhibiting muscle protein breakdown. And the balance between synthesis and breakdown is what determines net protein anabolism. So my guess would be that by including carbohydrates in this diet, you're able to accrue more muscle tissue, bench press, and squat. The counter movement jump didn't show any difference between the two groups. Both bench press and squat were significantly lower in the ketogenic diet group compared to the non-ketogenic group. But when I say lower, so people in the ketogenic diet group actually did not increase their bench press during this resistance training program, whereas the people in the non-ketogenic diet group did increase their bench, but perhaps these people are able to train harder because they have glucose and more glycogen available during their resistance training sessions, which, you know, if you're doing like singles and doubles, that's not really going to tax glycogen very much. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 repetitions, 
you will be calling upon quite a bit of that muscle glycogen. It says you can't gain muscle or strength on a ketogenic diet and look at this guy who's super jacked on a ketogenic diet. You can absolutely gain strength and muscle mass on a ketogenic diet. Both these studies show that you could gain lean body mass and strength on a ketogenic diet. What I'm saying is it's likely not optimal for increasing your lean body mass, then the current data seems to suggest that a ketogenic diet may be suboptimal for that. Don't hate me, hate the data. Go check it out. It's some good stuff. I will catch you guys next week.